Good evening. And since this is our annual uh, orientation meeting, uh, I would like to call this meeting to order and let the, uh, oh, cool, I get to say it this way. I'd like to ask the former chair to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thanks. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I could ask you to remain standing for a moment. Tomorrow is the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, and I'd like us to take a moment to reflect on what that meant to our country. Thank you. Oh, let's make America great again. <laughs> this is the monthly meeting of the uh, Board of Finance, and uh, our first order of business is to hear, consider, and uh, approve the election of 2017 officers. And I would like to start uh, with nominations to be chair. Are there any nominations? Mr. Walsh. I nominate uh, our past chairman and hopefully soon to be new chairman, Tom Flynn. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. All right. Any further nominations? Any further comments? Are we ready to uh, vote? All those in favor of Mr. Flynn, please signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll just abstain. Okay, one abstention, Mr. Flynn himself. Mr. Flynn, congratulations. The floor is yours. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Tetra, and thank you, everybody. I have a few comments to make after we get done with our important business of electing a vice chair and a secretary. So at this point, I'd like to open the floor for nominations for a vice chair of the Board of Finance for the coming season. Um, seeing none, I'm going to nominate uh, our current or immediate past chair or vice chair, uh, Mr. Jim Brown to continue as vice chairman for um, the coming year. Jim has been of great help and benefit to me as well as to the entire board. He does a wonderful job uh, running the meetings, does a wonderful job behind the scenes, and dedicates a lot of time to the budget subcommittee, which reviews and helps approve, improve our process each and every year. So I'd like to nominate Jim Brown as vice chair. Do I have a second to my nomination? Mrs. LeClaire seconds. I'd like to second Jim Brown. Thank you. And uh, are there any other nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations? Seeing none, all in favor of Mr. Brown to continue as vice chairman? Opposed? Abstentions? Congratulations, Jim. All right. Um, now I'd like to open the floor for nominations for secretary of the Board of Finance for the coming term. Mr. Brown? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate uh, Mary LeClaire for the position of secretary. Do we have a second to that nomination? I'd like to second. Mr. Mr. Becker, thank you. Do I we just, go ahead. a comment that Mary is our longest serving member on this board. Mary was uh, first elected in 2001. So that's 15 some, some odd years. My youngest daughter was born in 2001, and she's now a sophomore in high school. That's quite <laughs> the length of time, Mary. <laughs> sure, rub it in. And, uh, <laughs> and she has quite a few years to go before reelection. And it, it, if she does decide to run, uh, I'm sure she would be successful. I mean, she's chair of our audit committee. She knows this budget as well as anybody. Uh, she stays on top of our capital projects. She asks very detailed questions, um, and she's just been a, a an influence to us all for the past 15 years. Mary has the distinction of having first been elected to the board when she was 14 years old. <laughs> Do we have any other nominations for secretary for the Board of Finance? Any other nominations? Seeing none, all in favor of Mary LeClaire as secretary for the coming term. Opposed? Abstentions? Mary, congratulations. <laughs> all right. Um, I wanted to just take a few minutes, if I might, um, to first of all thank my colleagues for your support for, to continue as your chair. It is not a job or an honor that I take lightly. 
As I've said many times previously, I'm very proud to be a member of this body, proud to count you as friends and colleagues, and proud of the hard work uh, that I do to ensure that our board functions well on a month-to-month -month basis. Now, in years past, I stopped my comments there. Um, and these comments are more meant for a broader audience than just this body tonight. Um, this isn't a typical year. One of the things I'm most proud of in my years on this board is a proactive leadership position that this board has taken when confronting with financial issues that impact the town. The pension issues, the global economic meltdown, the un underfunding of some of our long-term liabilities, growing the town's fund balance, investigating the Metro Center project, planning capital projects. All of these are examples of issues in past years where our board has pressed for action, provided guidance, and raised awareness. Because of these actions, the town's financial position has not only been preserved, but strengthened. Working with our colleagues on the Board of Selectmen, the RTM, the Board of Education, as well as numerous department heads, we have done what was in the best financial interests of the town and its taxpayers year after year. As we start this next year, however, we face a new and growing threat, a loss of revenue in an unprecedented amount, first from the loss of funding coming back from the state, and second, the continued uncertainty from the loss of our largest single taxpayer, GE. These items, while not of our own making, are ours to help manage. The state, in years past, is taking the easy road, and they have underfunded long-term obligations, bonded significant sums of money. In short, they've kicked the can down the road, as opposed to making the tough decisions that financial hardships require. Sadly, those bills are coming due, and those policies are now negatively impacting us directly. We should not and cannot do the same thing. Through talking with my colleagues on this board, no one wants to make the same mistakes as others have and damage the town's financial position. I know the Board of Selectmen and the RTM share our concerns. We must be diligent in this next budget process. We must ask the department heads to review all of their processes, procedures, policies, and services. They must review their departments for areas where they can be even more efficient than many of them already are. We cannot simply ask the taxpayers of the town to make up the revenue shortfalls with increased tax burdens. Remember, through income and state taxes, state sales taxes, our citizens already contribute over $260 million annually to the state of Connecticut. The town gets back under $8 million in direct annual revenue. And that number, as we all know, is decreasing. Anticipated revenue shortfalls alone, if not addressed, may result in a 1.25 to 1.75 percent increase in funds required from other sources. And as the state looks to resolve its financial difficulties, the impact to our town and citizens is likely to be even more negative. Now, I've spoken with the first selectman, and I know that he sent the message to townside department heads that their budgets need to be conservative and particularly well thought out this year. I want to echo those comments and ask that they bring forth only new ideas on how we can be more efficient in the near term. I would also encourage the Board of Education to adopt that same line of thinking, to review their policies and procedures and operations, including areas related to unfunded mandates from the state, to identify areas where they can reduce spending while preserving the quality of the direct programs to the students of the town. No one on any of our boards wants to see the quality of services from the town or the Board of Education suffer. This board has been particularly supportive 
of educational initiatives and investments in our schools, both capital and operating. However, we need to recognize that our financial situation is changing and we must proactively adapt to the new reality. In the midterm, I would encourage the Board of Selectmen to act swiftly to move forward with the longer term strategic plan that the town, for the town that myself and many members of this board have been advocating for for quite some time. It is more imperative than ever that the operations of the town, the services provided, and the very structure of the town operations be reviewed with no sacred cows and every stone overturned. So, as we face these unprecedented times and revenue issues, we are asking, I am asking, that the other town bodies, elected officials, department heads, and town employees assist us in keeping Fairfield's financial position strong while understanding the significant pressures facing the town and our taxpaying citizens who are under enormous financial pressures of their own and are looking for us to provide the appropriate leadership. I have every confidence that this board will do its part. We will be leaders on these issues, but we need a collective effort to make the right decisions on behalf of all our taxpayers and citizens. So I thank everybody. We've got our work cut out for us in the next year. I know we're up to the task, but I don't anticipate it's going to be easy. Does anybody have any comments or follow-ups that they'd like to add? Seeing none, we'll go on to item number two on our agenda, which is the meeting schedule for 2017. Now, a couple things. There's been uh, one or two adjustments to the schedule in the past month. Um, it was circulated earlier for comment. Um, and we're likely to have a new member of the Board of Selectmen within the next couple of days if all things go well. Uh, with that being said, Mr. Tetro approached me just before the meeting and asked if we might uh, push this item, a vote on this item, uh, till our January meeting so that he could run it one more time by his board. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay. Uh, before I push this, I think I need to do one other thing. I want to need to approve the January 3rd meeting. So in one motion, what I want to do is make a motion that we have a January 3rd regularly, regular monthly meeting of the Board of Finance and that we postpone this item for voting on the night of that meeting. Do I have a second to that motion? Mr. Matola? thank you. Any questions, comments, concerns on that? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Thank you. That item's done. All right. Item number three is a motion to approve the minutes of November 1st and the November 22nd, 2016 meetings. Do I have a motion to put that before us? Mr. Brown, do I have a second? Mr. Hopkins, thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns on this? Um, does anybody have an issue if we vote on these meetings together? Was anybody absent would rather vote independently on these meetings? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote on this item. The item is before us to approve the minutes of November 1st and the November 2nd, 22nd uh, meetings. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That item is done. Thank you. Um, item number four, to hear, consider, and act upon a resolution entitled the resolution appropriating $1 million for the cost of the town's comprehensive LED lighting program and other comprehensive energy conservation measures and authorizing the funding of such appropriation. Mr. Bowman, welcome. And Mr. Tetro, if you'd like to come forward, um, feel free if you have any questions or whatever. Okay. Basically, is it on? Is it on? I can hear you. Okay. The, this is really a first step in a comprehensive asset management program the town's been working on for the past year, which is something like the strategic plan you're talking about. And um, we're, look, we're trying to look at the buildings from the rooftops to the uh, some, uh, subterranean uh, storage tanks and come up with a plan which will 
uh, deal with that, modernize it, replace it, etc., in, in such a way, mainly financing it through energy conservation measures, green power obligations, and, and buying power cheaper. So that at the end there will be a, a program, with three, four million dollars, don't know what it is, we're not there yet, but would have a payback of seven years or less and would have a positive cash flow in year one. So that's the comprehensive plan. Uh, we've been working with UI on this for a past year, and they sort of jumped the gun on us by saying, look, if you can come up with a, this program, uh, the LED portion of a program, by the end of the, this year, we can give you half a million dollars in grants, a 50% grant. Usually, we get like 20%. So, and then they have a new program now where they, they used to loan you $100,000 on your tax, on your utility bill, interest-free. Now, they have a program where they can also borrow $400,000 zero interest from a private bank. So we have come up with a million dollar program that, which would do that and we have a positive cash flow in year one and also obviously a payback would be there in four years. The, you can see the LED lighting is the principle of this. Now this is, and whatever, we, we don't spend a million dollars on LED lighting because the final design uh, may show it's 850000 or 900000 We do have a, a library, two different library programs that we would put forward that could, uh, some of that could be funded under this. So again, if you look at it, it's a half a million dollar grant, half a million dollar zero interest loan, 48 month payback period. Okay. That's Questions from board members? Just sorry, how many months payback period? 48 months, four years. Okay, questions so far from board members. Mr. DeWitt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, maintenance costs, lights we have today to these, any additional maintenance costs, less maintenance costs? Less maintenance costs for, these lights are guaranteed, the program will guarantee the lights for five years. Uh, the useful life is more like 10 to 15 years. Uh, as a result, there'll be no bulb changes for all that period of time. And also, there'll be a less, the, the number of bulbs will, the, the, 60, 100, whatever, there's only going to be three or four different bulbs rather than 10 or 12 different bulbs. So I think there's significant savings in maintenance on this. And part of the program, the overall program we're trying to do is to completely cut this kind of maintenance cost and put everything in, you know, uh, preventive maintenance. So. And you replace the, you're not replacing the poles, right? This is just the, the actual light assemblies on the top? And sometimes we're replacing the whole fixture, depending on the thing, or sometimes we'll be able to just replace the bulbs. I mean, it's a, it's from building to building is different. Uh, at Independence Hall is very tough to build the way they sit in the ceiling. Beyond that, there's all wires in there. We can't go in and do what you might ordinarily do. You have to do something different there. So each building has its own sort of challenges there. Got it. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Mrs. Marmion. I just have a question about the um, the asset and energy management plan. Is that you mentioned you have an energy consultant? Is it mainly um, your department that's doing this study, or is it a consultant? And how is that study itself yeah. being funded? And also, what is the timeline for completion? All right, first, we have on board, you know, through an RFP, an energy consultant that's been doing the planning for the first the last three or four years, and that's uh, EarthCore, which is listed here, EarthCore Energy Services. So he's been working on that with us. Basically, we, we plan this together, Public Works and ourselves. Uh, James Ryan, the new building energy manager, is extremely, you know, well versed in this kind of thing so we sit down together and do this <coughs> and part of it today to also another part of it is going to be we have someone else to come in to, to do a uh, study on the windows and the, uh, the heat oh, right on my mind they, 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 you put the it's like the fire department has this equipment to shine in the building you can see where the fire is uh, I forgot the name of the camera. Where the energy yeah, the so you can see that. It also does, uh, a, a, what do you call it, the pressure testing, so you can see where air is escaping the building. That's, our, that's all part of the thing. So we'll have a window and a door program as well as the roof and everything else. The roofs are made very expensive. There's no payback. So you try and use the lighting and the HVAC to pay back the things that have no real payback and try and come up with a program. Now, with that program will, will be ready. We, UI is funding that study 100%. So that, that study should be done within 90 days. And somewhere along the line, we'll be able to come back then with a comprehensive program. The first stage, we, we would not have presented this LED now if you guys didn't come up with a half a million dollars. Huh? So. 
Are you good, Mrs. Martin? Other questions? Mr. Walsh, I thought I saw your hand. Sure. <coughs> this energy consultant, you said it's Earth Corps? Yes. Is his name Mr. Ryan? No. no. Oh. No, he is the building energy manager for the town. Okay. Um, and Earth Corps, how long have we been working with them? We've been working with them for five years. Okay. Do we pay them? Basically, uh, we pay them, well, when they get money from UI for these program, energy opportunity programs, which we have 22 of them now that they've done, they get paid directly by UI. We don't have to appropriate <coughs> money for them. They, only, they, they get paid at the end of the project when the lighting or when the electric bill shows they've achieved the savings that UI says they said they would or they don't get paid. So they're taking the risk of all this, that which is pretty good. So yeah, we've had 23 successes with them now. They do consultant services for us, then they get paid separately. But they, that's like $5,000 a year. Most of what they're doing, they're doing at risk with UI and taking the, the risk of getting paid. If they apply for all these funds and don't get them, they don't get paid. W was some of this a consulting prop, uh, project? Some, was some of this a consulting project? Some of this here? Yes. Now this, this was, he did this as part of uh, the grant <coughs> and loan application to UI, so we're not paying him for any of this now. UI is paying the whole bill. Okay. Uh, this has to be executed by December 31st. This is, seems kind of reminiscent of the um, electric charging stations where we have these very short time frames. Why is this stuff so tight? Why are, why are we getting this stuff when we have like, it's either you vote for it today or we lose the entire opportunity of a million dollars. It just kind of seems a, a, a bit strange. I can't answer an electric charging station because that yep. money had been approved a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But UI only came to this in, in November and said, can you put together a program where you could get, uh, get a million dollars worth of loans and grants for us? It's got to be done by the end of the year because their, their money is approved by Pura okay. know, on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. They happen to have money left over. Okay. They offered it to us. That's, you're right, though. It's like... It's always that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just seems like these things the keep thing coming to us. Next year we can apply for the same thing again if they have money left over. Okay, so this one's in just an opportunity because they had funds left over that they're right. trying to spend by the end of the year, which makes more sense. Some of the other ones have That's not right. made as much sense. Going from 20% to 50%, which was pretty nice. <laughs> uh, and then later on under number three, you talk about motion detectors and sound detectors. What are sound detectors? You can deter determine whether people are walking around the building that are still in there? Or how, what, what, what is that? Basically, uh, the motion detectors that we currently have in these buildings are also sound detectors. In other words, uh, it's sensitive to both motion and sound. Mm -hmm. So if, if people may not be, uh, if they're walking by and they're making a sound, we've had it so sensitive when someone's talking in the other room, the light would go on in another office. <laughs> You have to get that. So it's and it's also heat sensitive. I didn't say that. So all three get tied to the same system. So that <coughs> the temperature goes up, it senses that and shuts the thermostat off. The temperature goes down to low, it turns the thermostat off. So it's a new independent new building energy management systems are pretty amazing, really. Okay. Uh, under the 19 buildings that you have here, Sullivan Independence Hall is not on here. Oh no, here it is, Independence Hall. I'm looking at under Sullivan. Sorry about that. There seems to be a lot of things there already, like these motion detectors and, yeah, and, there. and there's LED lights on the chandeliers that have just recently gone up, I've noticed. Where? If you go on each side of where you walk in on Sullivan Independence Hall. There's no, no, no LEDs there. There's none? No. I'll look tomorrow, but I saw them about. We haven't replaced any, but. Three weeks most, ago. Most of this is interior lighting, obviously. Okay. The light, it's also parking lot lighting. The parking lot. Independence Hall, parking lot Sherman Green, the rec center, the, down the marina, any place there's parking lot. These, the lights that we have there are really, if you ever come out of Independence Hall at the nighttime, you can see they're, they're very inefficient lighting. Whereas the LED lighting just, you know, spreads, shines down, mm -hmm. and spreads just where you need it. And, and it's much safer lighting, especially for people, the older people or women walking late at night and worry about things. So there's no LED lighting in Sullivan Independence Hall right now? If there was, when the lamp was put in, it wasn't to my knowledge anyway. There's not inside. As far as I know, there's not outside either. All right, take a look at those chandeliers tomorrow. Chandeliers on, 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 your, on, your, on your way in. Yeah. In regards to where it says public works on our energy consultant will obtain quotes for installation from proven contractors, does this not have to go off to for an RFP under the purchasing? It's all going through UI, remember. UI is, is handling the money. So it's UI's contractors? Yeah. Well, they're, they're using our contractors. They're letting us choose the contractors, choose the equipment, 
they have to evaluate to see whether it meets their standards in terms of four-year payback and all. And then they pay them the money. Okay. Explain that money thing to me, because uh, I was going to ask some questions. So it seems to have come up now. Because my question was going to be, do they give us the money, the million dollars? Some of it is loan money, some of it as, and depending on the given year, or do they make direct payment to these individuals? They make direct payment. Okay. So how does it exactly work? All right. The first part, the grant, again, is paid directly by UI to the contractor. Uh, that's the way it's always been. Uh, so he's, he's held accountable. Again, he doesn't get paid until the job's done. So he's going to be doing a million dollar project here and not get paid until July or June when the project is done. Uh, the loan gets paid the same way from you, uh, the interior loan. The private financing loan gets paid to the contractor uh, at town approval. You know, we have to approve the payment or it doesn't get paid. So both UI and the town approve the payment. Okay, so when you want UI to make a payment, are you making the decision whether he gets paid or is it our oh. finance department, is Mr. Mayor, who, who's making uh, the decision? On the grant, UI makes the decision based on the, the performance. On the loan, UI makes the decision with our approval. And who's responsible for that approval? Well, we have a, Public Works has been. It, it could be finance, but whoever wants it. You know, basically, we're watching the bills and watching the work. So, you know, have they done the work the way we want it to them? It's just like a regular construction job. Are we liable for any type of cost overruns, or if and if UI doesn't for some reason approve these payments, or is their contract set up in such a way that they under the contractors that do the work understand and sign a contract that if UI doesn't approve it? Because the reason I'm asking is, is what I don't want is since the work's being done on our property, and say there's a, a small skirmish between UI and the contractor, since we own the property, I don't want a mechanics lien put against our building because the, the goods and services were not only delivered, but the work was performed on our property. I mean, this is like a similar to a homeowner who's using a, like a general contractor and all of a sudden ends up with a mechanics lien on their property. We're talking about a million dollars worth of work here. Um, do you know how that works? No. I've never had, again, in 23 of these projects, we never run across any problems, so I have no way of you know, giving you any history on anything like that. All right. Um, well, maybe I could talk to you offline about it, but it just concerns me that you know, UI and this contractor get into something. <coughs> the natural law says, unless there's a contract that says they can't file a mechanics lien or, or there's other terms to that specific contract, stuff that we don't have before us, they could file a mechanics lien within 90 days of the work, of not being paid after the last time work or material was delivered by, by, the, by the installer. I'll check with the United Illuminating's contract with them to see if they cover that. You know? Yeah, it would make sense that, I guess, if you were going to do that and they're using their contractors, they're going to make them sign a contract that yeah. explains all that, that waives rights to mechanics, liens, and things like that. But it just... I know just there's no cost overruns. It covers that. It is what it is, you know? Okay. This third-party engineer, is this UI's, once again, UI's third-party engineer? No, we're not hiring this person? No, we are hiring him. We're hiring him. Okay. He, he works for us and for UI, basically. But Who's this person? Earthcore Energy, again. Oh, the same person? Okay. Same company, yeah. Okay. So the third-party engineer that's doing the verification that's seems to be the exact same person that's no, going to get their check cut to them no, no, sorry. for <laughs> getting the business in. Okay. I misspoke. Okay. The third-party engineer, I didn't hear that. Okay. Third-party engineer is another uh, company we would, we would choose. And we've already, you know, got some proposals who would verify that the work being done is what we want to be done and we'll for an independent verification. We've done that before with Johnson Control and the other ones. We've always had third-party engineers to verify the work. So. This, that is interesting because UI wants to make sure that the savings are there, correct? Yep. So it would seem to me that in this one instance that they would be want to make sure that there's somebody to verify the savings. But this, in this case, they're letting it be the town that hires they do this it person. Themselves too. Okay. But in our case, it's not just the savings. We want to make sure they're putting in the equipment we've chosen. You know, there's a plethora of LED lighting mm -hmm. for different purposes. We want to make sure you got the manufacturer you want, sure. the colorization, all the, you know, the complicated LED things that we want. Okay. Uh, they could, or the, the right brand. I mean, they could put in a cheaper brand, mm -hmm. you know, and achieve the, the goals for the first month or two. Mm -hmm. But so we want our third partner to make sure they're. What we specify 
and agree to as being installed. Okay, and the person that the town hires, is that part of paid for by the grant UI reimburse no, we us? Have to pay for that. We have to pay for that. So how much is that part costing us? That's like a five thousand dollar it's it's a small five thousand per year, five thousand for the entire project. Project, yeah. For the project. So you hire them, you go into and do a contract with them and it's like says five thousand dollars over this period of time? You know, we come internally out of our professional services budget, public works to pay for that. So Okay. Uh so when we get down to number four, when we start talking about the total cost is a hundred and twenty five points. Excuse me? Yeah, it's points. on the 14 points, correct? 14 points. And then this question also is regards to not only number 14, and uh, number, f excuse me, four, but also in regards to number 12, financing, uh, which is to me somewhat similar. Um, what dollar amounts are going to be hitting our budget? The, f the grant money is not going to be hitting because that's free money, correct? Well, it's going to be hitting. You're going to have to pay it back. It's going to be hitting in the expenses. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be paying that money back. But you mean, <coughs> other than the loan, uh, I th if you look at the exhibit two, uh, what schedule, I think we will. Revenue and expenses. No, there won't be revenue. What you're going to have is you're going to have lower actual direct electricity right. costs. So that line item in the budget should go down right. by about $120,000 well, per year. it won't go down until the loan's paid off. No, it will go down. I mean, let me, the electrical cost will go down. Okay, you're going to have yeah, well, a separate line. You're going to have a separate line that pays back the loan. Yep. That in the initial years is actually going to be a little bit of a loss, about five thousand right. dollars for a few years, and then from that point on, once the loan is paid back within four years, your electrical cost is going to continue to that reduced rate for as long as these lights last. Right. So the only in budget cost is there may be a a monthly payment in uh, you know, May of this year or something like that. When, you know, if the project's completed before uh, the next budget year, we may have to come up with you know a monthly payment. You see, the loan the loan doesn't occur until the job is done. <coughs> We're not borrowing the money now. <laughs> when the job's done, the loan occurs and the contractor gets paid. So there's no. Which means when we're going to start in. In uh, realizing the savings, we're going to actually start paying back the loan. There may be a one month there, but other than that, we're not you know, paying any carrying charges. Under point 12, you say that the first installment on this loan, $100,000, will be due and payable on June 2017, which is this budget year, the current budget year we're in right now. Well, that's right. June 2018. I mean, by June 2018. But it isn't June, June 2017. Nothing's due in June 2017, except maybe one month's uh, principal. On if I say that. One month principal on? Could be. If the job is done before July 1st mm -hmm. and accepted that we in, in June, then we may have a June payment right. done. You know, it'd be instead of July 1st. So that this fiscal year could be impacted by a, a single month payment. Okay. The rest of it is in the final fiscal year. But theoretically, you'd have savings on the energy costs yeah. for that but one month as well. You'd going along because it would already be done. Right. So, but we still have to make a cash payment. So I think it would balance out, but it's hard to you know, project. Exactly. It time it. So these installments are due monthly, not yearly? <coughs> They're due monthly, yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's I, I, I was reading this the way it was written. And <laughs> it was made to seem like $100,000 was due on June 2017. Before it yeah. goes to the RTM, I'll change that sentence. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Can I? You all set for a second? Uh, I'm just about done. My last question has to do with maintenance. You said there's a five year guarantee on everything that's yeah, on installed? The on the product and the installation, workmanship both. Okay. And then afterwards, we're responsible after the five years. And I noticed that you said uh, earlier on in the presentation. Um, about the life, you know, part of the savings is not having to replace the bulbs as frequently, which, what do they normally say, 14 years or something like that? Yeah, but, you know, well, I'm, I'm haven't just been around long enough to say that they are going to last 14 years. So. I know, I, and it's kind of funny because, you know, that's if you read, like, as, an, as a residential homeowner, like most of us here are, um, and you buy a light bulb, one of these LED light bulbs, 
and uh, from Home Depot. Um, and I've installed a number that my entire house has them. And they're supposed to last 14 years. And when they give you the savings, that's calculated in, is the, the 14 year. It's part of the payback. But I'll tell you, I've ended one of those bulbs last longer than five years. I mean, I, I've had some of them have lasted two years. And then, you know, in order to get your money back, you have to try to find that Home Depot receipt for the whatever, $6, which you definitely have thrown away. So, and I'm sure that's part of their business model that they know that you'll throw the receipt out so they're never going to have to pay on that guarantee. Home so um, it just seems, well, I don't, I don't know. Cree's Cre a pretty good brand. All we have to do is choose the right manufacturer that has mm -hmm. the history. You know, Ameri we want American made for the most part. And there are three or four companies that are really, really been recommended by all kinds of independent agencies and government that, that have a proven track record and are using a product which is past standards. And that's what we're trying to get in here. I, mean, I, I did the same thing. I bought, I have a lot of Christmas. I must have close to 2,000 bulbs. I replaced them all at LED. Mm -hmm. I, it paid me back in the first two years. But, uh, and, but I've had some brands that have burned out and others that are five years later still doing fine. It's like, yeah. And I learned now, by G or something like that. Maybe I shouldn't say G. I'm, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't buy an, an unnamed brand, that's for sure. Well, gee, I company that shall not be named. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, it would just be interesting if, you're, if your department kept track of this once it's installed to see how long this stuff uh, actually lasts. Because there's a lot of talk about 14 years on all these LED bulbs, no matter what the brand, whether you're using Cree, which is one of the... Exactly, and those are the ones I'm having burn out is Cree, <laughs> and you know they've been. Oh, pretty are you leaving your lights on, Jim? Uh, not not very long. I'm not there very often, actually. <laughs> Maybe I'm not using them enough. Um, however, it would be interesting if you kept track of what the actual well, we'll be, length of it is. The overall asset management plan. Uh, the key to that is is saving hundreds of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of on maintenance. Mm -hmm. and part of that is tracking these costs for you know bringing outside contractors in, buying equipment in-house, projecting ahead of time. That'll all be tracked when we get the big plan. But otherwise, it makes no sense if you can't track it. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Mrs. LeClaire. Well, most of my questions were already answered, but I did have one on um, some of the the project details on um, the schedule. The ones for like the WPCA, will those get, the costs for that get allocated back to them and the savings you know, it'll be in their um, budget, in their be, electric budget. Sure. So each of these will go to the specific budgets that well, hold those electric works, actually, bills? Well, public works, all electric except for WPCA is in public works. Okay. Are you good, Mrs. LeClaire? Yeah. Good, Mr. Pecker. And, and then, um, all right, so that, that was actually one of them. And uh, another item, the way that these grant payment, or well, really loan payments are, right? So the grant's going to come in and the, the grant's 100%, so that's great. But the loan payments... Are you, are those going to go in actually in a separate line item? Like, how is that currently done? Or does it just sort of reside within the overall electric account? Yeah, it, it, like no, how is it actually separate within? Item. Separate line item. It is a separate oh, yeah. line item. You look, at the end, at the end of the, the bill, there's a line item for energy opportunity, which is the name of the program. That's what it is. On the bill. On the bill, yeah. I'm talking budget. So She's the talking budget. in the general oh, yeah, budget. Put, I'm, talking, the I'm, budget talking, I'm talking the actual yeah. budget. The budget so we put together with Linda Gardner does have that in there, yes. It has to be. As in for WPCA. This is going to go to. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And and it'll just be, I mean, both these loans will just get grouped up under the same line, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Somebody else? Mr. Bowman, quickly, um, can we turn to... Turn to page. Uh, turn to the page that goes over the cost savings, the UI, the loan, and the savings and expense. So where it basically says um, the grand total of the savings is about 1.8 million dollars up until fiscal year 2032, and then you back out the payback of the loan and it comes to 1.3 million. Yep. Um, you're 14 points, and thank you. You always do a good job at putting those together, and I appreciate that. Um, I want to talk about the reliability, reliability of these cost estimates. I'm interested on in two things. The, so you hired the outside engineer, or the outside engineers come in through UI, yeah. and they've put together the estimated costs, or you basically said, we had a million dollars, how can we spend it? And they went around and said, we need these 30 lights, these 20 lights, this, 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 this. Is that 
That's how it starts, right? That how it, that's how it starts. How comfortable are you in the costs he's saying that we can get all this done for? Right now, we're not completely comfortable. These are estimates. These costs are now being reviewed by UI's engineers, and they're to see how accurate they are. They have to approve those costs. Okay. We think we may have, you know, maybe like nine hundred thousand dollars rather than a million. That's why we put in other energy improvements so we can take advantage of it. So like in the library, we have we have a program approved at a library that the hundred thousand dollar loan from UI disappeared. So it's just sitting there. The town approved money that we can take and then incorporate that into it. And uh, so by the time we get through, there'll be a million dollars in verified costs by, you know, engineering. So we're not going to go over the million dollar cost. Go over the million dollar. Okay. So you're reasonably comfortable that what they've done has gotten you within 10% or so? Yes. At this point, absolutely. Okay. What about the cost savings? How cost comfortable savings, are you? Again, UI is verifying the cost savings. Our third party engineer will verify the cost savings. And after the first year, we'll, we'll know how accurate they are. Uh, over the years, sometimes it's hard to tell because it's a, a smaller item in a budget. The, the library, then all of a sudden, the library shut down. <laughs> Two or three months on these days on Sundays, or you put new equipment in. But lighting is a lot is easier to deal with, I think. Okay. Uh, what I'm looking at here is the. Um, let me be honest. That the answer you just gave me doesn't give me a great deal of comfort no, on the I mean, cost it's, side. It's not that it's hard to do, right? Right. What's giving me a little bit of more comfort on the cost side are two things, or rather, not on the cost on the saving side, the energy saving side. Number one, my own personal experience of my energy bill going down. Um, number two, the fact that the spread here is so large between what we're actually going to pay out, right? Yep. Because we're going to end up paying out $500,000, correct? Correct. And the estimated savings here is $1.8 of which even if we're off by a howitzer, sure. we're not losing we're not losing money on this. That's true. Because otherwise, your answer, quite frankly, isn't great <laughs> mm. about how much we're going to save. Right. You're exactly right. It's really hard to. You know, so many different things are going on in the building. Sometimes it's electrical. Like, if you have a real hot summer, all of a sudden you spend more money on air conditioning. Well, and we're trying to, and we're trying to just hone in on these costs. And how 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 have they calculated this? Can you just give us a Reader's Digest version of how there's, they? They start out with you know there's a. I forgot the organization. There's a stand, uh, uh, industry standard for uh, cost per square foot of a building <coughs> for lighting. They start out with that standard, and, said, and where and they know where we get, they know exactly where we are now in cost per square foot, and what the industry standard is to get to an Energy Star rating. And what they're doing is to take that lighting and getting it to that standard. So I mean, it's a pretty. It's not a guesswork in that sense. There is a Science There's a calculation that, that goes into it. And that's what you're proving to UI, that basically you can do that. Now, they can't do it on every building, so you'll see as time goes on, it just won't get there. There's other, Independence Hall is too high. It's going to cost more than other buildings because of the nature of the way the lighting is. But, but most other buildings will be able to get there. So. But that's how it starts, the cost per square foot. Then we also looked in terms of uh, university standards, in terms of what, you know, what it says in Throughout the industry, how, how, what percentage of your, your electric bill is lighting? What percentage of HPC? And there's all kinds of up and down. Tracking, I right? Around to that one. I did it that way. And between doing the scientific way and just doing the, this estimated way, we came within four or five percent of each other. So we're pretty comfortable that you know with going forward it'll work. So again, the large spread here between the costs and the estimated yeah. savings gives you some comfort in that. And some of that, that nice savings will help offset some of the other things that don't have savings, like a roof somewhere, you know? Right. Overall, yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns on this item from any board member? It would be interesting at five years from now. I mean, I know it's long, we can't really put this down, but to get a presentation on whether we really hit these savings or not, an actual, an actual amount. Um, so. Do we ever come back and do an audit? I'll still be here. I'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> do we ever go back and do they ever come back and do an audit after a few years? It'd be, to Mr. Walsh's point, it'd be interesting oh, yeah. to go back. They just have to, they do a one month audit. But part of my overall big plan I want to do is I, I want to, uh, whoever does the work, I'm going to hold back 5% of the work for a year. So we come back and do an audit in the 13th month to see if it's still achieving the savings it said they would in the first month. 
So that, that's one thing I want to get in there. That's a It'd be very interesting as we go forward with these things. You've done a great job with the, the green energy initiatives and all that kind of stuff, you and the teams. Um, it'd be really interesting to get an audit back and see if we're getting what we thought we're getting. And, and I think a bunch when we of do this kind of areas. comprehensive program, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah. If you're doing everything at once, you can really you know, you know what's there. It's not that nothing unknown or something that wasn't included in the program. I think it'd be, you might not be able to tell specifically which item gave you the savings, but you can see that the savings are there or not in total. Sure. Thank you. Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to bring this for a vote. Let me read the motion and we'll go forward. To hear, consider, and act upon a resolution entitled Resolution Appropriating $1 million for the cost of the town's comprehensive LED lighting program and other comprehensive energy conservation measures and authorizing the funding of such appropriation. All in favor of this item? Opposed? Abstention? That item carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, have a good one. Uh, last item on the agenda tonight to hear, consider, and act upon any other communications. And I don't know of any other than one item, which is Mr. Tetro. Would you come forward and just tell us where the Holland Hill Building Committee process stands, since we get a lot of questions and read a lot about that right now? Thank you, Mr. Bowman, and happy holidays and happy new year. Thank you, Mr. Tetra. The, um, from the top, uh, the Board of Selectmen is scheduled to have an update, not a resolution or bond resolution, but an update on the Holland Hill building project uh, tomorrow at our Board of Selectmen meeting. And I would encourage um, this board to have an update at your next meeting, and I would think they'd be ready to do that also. Mr. That Mayor, can you take a note on that and let's make sure we, you and I get that on the agenda for January, please? Um, Thank as we you. realized that um, looking at what's taking place during the design phase is critical in terms of where the project comes out and is it meeting the uh, cost objectives as well as the performance objectives that, that we laid down. So I've asked the um, building committee to come and give us an update board selection level specifically you know the, the there were two updates I think I spoke to this board a little while back and saying the drawings that I saw showed uh, what seemed to be a large amount of square footage that's been added as part of this project and that seemed over and above what I was anticipating uh, since this I thought was similar to other projects where we up upgrade the core and remove the portables and uh, that type of uh, program the second thing that happened is the most recent um, building committee meeting, they also had their initial cost estimates done. Now these are the initial cost estimates. It hasn't gone out to bid. There's a lot more cost work to do and there hasn't been any value in value engineering yet. But they came in at, at $21 million and change. And that seemed to be much higher than anything I was expecting. The uh, waterfall chart had something close to $13 million in it. But the acid test for me is kind of Riverfield. We built Riverfield to the Ed Spec. Riverfield to the Ed Spec plan was about 14 million. Just to be clear, Riverfield came in at 16 million because of what I'll call EPA contamination requirements that ha added two million dollars to the cost to redo the gym that we all looked at and approved as that went through. But the Ed Spec cost, when that project was approved, was 14 million, and we came in pretty close to that. So 21 million seems about 50% higher than that number. So I've got a host of questions as to what is driving that and where that comes from. And that's what is, I'm looking forward to hearing back tomorrow. Okay. So other than a host of questions, I don't have more answers than that because that's what we're looking for tomorrow. <coughs> so I'd encourage you to uh, perhaps watch what takes place tomorrow in terms of the update. We certainly can get you any handouts in advance of your meeting so you have prep for that if you'd like to have that same update I'm encouraging the building committee to go to all three boards kind of give everybody an update in terms of where we stand especially because it's it's it seems this uh, much of an increase over what was being anticipated when we put together the building committee and kind of looked at the plans just to be clear as much as I have a serious qu questions about the cost we're absolutely committed to moving forward on a project to renovate Holland Hill. 
I don't want the Holland Hill parents that are hearing this discussion be concerned about the project moving forward. That it will. However, we do have an obligation to everybody to look at this. Because if you look at a 50 percent increase here, the question would be, okay, how much higher than that will Mill Hill be when that comes through? And importantly, t from a community standpoint, if we look at this kind of cost for Holland Hill, how far out does that move the other projects that are part of the capital plan? So I think we need to take a look at what is driving this, what we can do from a design standpoint, but also get a better understanding uh, of what these costs are and how does that impact other projects. Does that mean Mill Hill will be significantly higher than what Holland Hill is? You know, one of the concerns, certainly, is that we're treating all of our students and all of our schools fairly and to the extent that we can equally. Certainly for a Riverfield parent, you might wonder ask why is this project coming in so much more than what was done at Riverfield. And I think from my standpoint, one of the questions I have is comparing it to Riverfield, what is driving those estimates so much higher than Riverfield? Thank you, Mr. Tetra. Anybody have any <coughs> brief questions or comments? We obviously need a lot more information to have a big dialogue on this. Mr. DeWitt? Maybe just a clarification I wasn't following. Um, you said you've seen the drawings and it appears a lot more area than you had anticipated but does the building committee believe that the drawings that you're seeing that the estimates for 21 million are based on the ed specs or is that just a question that needs to come up I'm gonna say yes to that I'm not sure that anybody's clear why the ed specs for Riverfield versus the ed specs for Holland Hill would drive a cost <coughs> number this much higher so there's a host of questions that every yeah. time you yeah no and I don't want you to speculate I, I understand I'm, I was I'm just a just little confused those those are all the right questions mr. DeWitt those are all the right questions mm. thank you all right thank you <laughs> mr. Mattol they are they building that as a 504 school do you know for that, a population? Yeah, that is one of the ed spec criteria okay thanks and I think at the time that the Board of Ed agreed on that that seemed a reasonable approach however I'm not sure the Board of Ed uh, did any sort of cost analysis or cost impact in terms of what is that uh, standard when applied across all the elementary schools <coughs> what does that do and and so that is no doubt one of the questions that may be revisited as part of this do we need to do that do we need to do that now can we set this up um, I just there are a host of questions coming up and and uh, without hearing the update it's it's we can play the question and answer game for a long time without answers. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, it's it's a shocking number. I mean, especially compared to Riverfield, and especially when we know if we do something at Mill Hill, those costs are going to be actually dramatically higher than they would be at Holland Hill under the same circumstances because of the challenge ge uh, geography there. And we have. Um, a project that Sherman that folks as we heard at the capital plan mm -hmm. workshop yeah. coming on so potentially this if the 21 million is real or close to real that really pushes all those other projects out yeah so the question mm -hmm. becomes what does that mean and are there adjustments we can make here uh, and do we have to build it all out for 504 based on what the school projections are and how when do we get there so if we're not going to get there for a lot of years <coughs> There yeah. might be some flexibility in that. I, I just I can speculate on a whole lot, but I just yeah. I don't have real data yet to, to do that. Yeah, I'd like to get some projection numbers when if we can get somebody from the board of ed here that same night to hear projection numbers. I mean because they seem to be adding people from this open choice program. Right. And we're taking more and more kids in from out of this town. And yet our building costs are gonna be dramatically increasing to pay for seats. And they're, they're and I think we've got to look at all this. Agreed. All the questions. How much of the building is classroom related versus other special relations? Changes. Right. Mm -hmm. How much of the current building is being renovated versus what we were anticipating? I, I, I can list 20 questions here that yeah. I can't let's answer for you tonight. Let's wait for the yeah. presentations. And Mrs. LeClaire, you had uh, your hand up. I just had a quick question. Is there someone from your office or from the town side that regularly? attends all the building committee meetings and reports back to Is that a setup question? <laughs> no, no. I just think there should be, but that's, the, that's the all. Let me, let me answer in 
broad terms and then in specific terms, okay. if that's okay. In s uh, broad terms, Judy Ewing okay. attends these and get up gets updates on these and, and highlights some of the key issues coming up to me so I have a chance to see those ahead of time. That's one. Second, we are looking, and, and I've talked to Mr. Flynn. I don't know if I've had a chance to talk to others here. We are looking at a slightly different approach moving forward with building committees, and the goal would be to use that on Smith-Richardson where the Board of Selectmen would actually <coughs> hire the owner's rep so that the owner's rep would in essence report to the Board of Selectmen and, and we'd get a little bit better feedback. That would take some of the pressure off the volunteer boards of hiring that owner's rep firm right away mm -hmm. or also in, in terms of for folks new to the construction management process knowing what to expect from an owner's rep. By doing that across multiple projects it would give us more leverage with that owner's rep firm to make sure that we train them right, they get used to us, and if things they aren't doing their job then they won't lose that project they'll lose all the future projects based on that so it gives a little bit more leverage that's the broad answer the specific answer in this case <laughs> uh, Joe Michelangelo and Tom Dabrowski are on this project team so yes I'm hearing back from them as we go forward too okay thank you so, so the first building committee that you put two guys that report to you on, we go for budget by 50, 100 percent. Wow. I'll point out that we haven't gone over yet. <laughs> I would also point out for those folks that were worried that the first selectman would be controlling too much of this, that obviously it's not the case. <laughs> touche, touche. All right, thank you, Mr. Toucher. I appreciate you coming tonight to do that. Is there any other questions on this? If not, that's the last item. I want to take the opportunity to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, happy holidays in general, and a happy New Year since we won't see each other officially uh, until January 3rd. So thank you, everybody, and I wish everybody a, a good one. Uh, with that, I'll take a motion. Mr. Becker, seconded by Mr. DeWitt. All in favor of adjournment? Opposed? Abstentions? Good night, everybody.